So good evening, guys. Welcome back. So we are going to continue our Terraform session. So today is Terraform day 10 session. And today the date is 15th. And 2024, and the timing is 4 7 p.m. ISD. So, guys, in the last couple of sessions, like the day eight and the day nine, like the previous two sessions, right? So, we had majorly covered on the on the data formats. It means that what are the different types of data formats we have, right? And uh, we discussed something on your JSON format. Firstly, we discussed on XML, uh, then JSON format and YAML format, as well as uh, we also discussed about the HashiCorp configuration language, right? These are the main major, uh, you know, like uh, data formats we have. So HCL, which is nothing but, which is for our Terraform itself. It means that whatever the data types which we follow in the Terraform, right? So we use a language we know as a, HashiCorp configuration language. This is the language which is designed by the Terraform itself. It means that you need to follow whatever the syntax or whatever the data formats which are provided by the Terraform community. So it is more or less the same, like whatever the data formats what we have in uh, YAML or in JSON. Right? It's the same for it's the same data types are available even in HCL also. But there is a small slight differences are there the way the data are being represented. Right, and we also checked all those things uh, in our previous session or in the day nine session. We have checked all the things, whatever we like, uh, we try to understood. Right, like we given, <laughs> we saw an example in all the like uh, other templating formats, like uh, the cloud formation templating format or Azure templating form, Azure ERM template format, as well as in the Terraform, how it looks. So we saw each and every example, a single every uh, example we saw. We went through example and we tried to understood and, and also we try to understand the differences between them, right? So this is what I covered in the last session. So what I would request everyone that if you have not gone through it, please go to the recording. It will be very good because you will be getting some uh, some inputs you'll be getting so that it will be very clear when you're learning any other stuff in our upcoming sessions, right? It will become very easy for you to understand. So I would uh, request everyone to go through those recordings. Now, today's agenda, what would be our day 10's agenda? So, guys, in day 10 agenda, we will be covering few things. Like, for example, today we will be covering, uh, like, if you see in the uh, Terraform day uh, 7 session, right? So, in the Terraform day 7 session, I remember we had covered something known as a, uh, how to create a security groups, Right? As well as we also saw like how to create a, uh, you know, like a key pair and how to attach this key pair to an EC2 instance. This is what we had covered in, a, in the seventh session, right? And uh, we will be continuing from here on, here itself actually. It means that actually like there are many other things are there which we need to learn. So basically we use this Terraform for creating are resources in the cloud environment, right? And we should be very much aware of how to create this resources manually. It means that when you have a hands-on and doing it manually, now you should be having, now you should be able to get to know that, like how exactly we can do everything through a Terraform code. That is the basis actually. So it means that firstly, you should have an idea of doing it manually, plus you need to do it in an automated fashion using the Terraform. That is all, that is all required. Now, the thing is that actually, guys, there are so many resources are there which need to be created in your in your cloud environment. Let it be AWS or let it be Azure or let it be GCP, right? Any cloud environment, you will be creating a lot of resources. And we should have an idea of how to create a resource also. So how we'll get an idea? With the help of a documentation. So whenever you go for uh, with your Terraform registry documentation, you will you'll go to the specific providers. And within the specific providers, you will get a lot of documentation where you follow the documentation and you try to write a code. This is what we have been learning. And this is how you have to learn. There is no other way. You have to strictly follow the documentation and follow it and do it. So there are many other things other which will be going to be add on in the upcoming sessions, like what are variables, 
right? What are the different types of variables you have? Yeah, what is Terraform state file? Like that, there are many other concepts will come into the picture where we'll be learning, right? So now the thing is that actually, guys, so it is always because you, we all are beginners or we are learning uh, Terraform, it is always better that whenever we are working on Terraform, we try to involve in creating as many resources as possible to the Terraform. Say, for example, we created a VPC, we created a, uh, you know, like uh, many other resources, like, for example, we created even a routing table, we also created many other resources. In the last session, uh, that is number day seven session, we created a security group, ski pair, like that, n number of resources are there, you need to have, you need to always practice by creating these resources, right? Because what happened, right, at, at interview point of time, they might ask you any question. They might ask you that, okay, can you create a resource? Uh, can you, uh, I have this requirement, can you create a Terraform file? So you should be able to know that. Once you have practiced at least one to, once or twice, I think that would be sufficient for us to remember and everything. Clear? So today, what we're going to do that, today we are going to uh, do, uh, or today we're going to practice some more examples on creating few other resources. Say for example, uh, say for example, you have an elastic IP, okay? What is Elastic IP we'll see? We'll also see that what is AWS underscore AMI, AWS underscore AMI underscore copy, like that. AWS underscore EBS, EBS underscore create or resource. AWS underscore EBS underscore create. So this is one uh, resource or this is one of the, uh, by using ABS, AWS EBS create, right? You can create an EBS volume, right? So there are many other are there. Like for example, I want to create an IAM user. So how to create an IAM user also we can skip today, right? So when we practice all such things, right? We will get to know about that particular cloud environment also. What are the different features or what are the different services are provided by the cloud? As well as you'll get a habit of even writing a code within a Terraform, right? Now, before all these things, so we will be starting with this, guys, actually. We will be uh, we'll be doing it uh, this exercise today. But what I would, uh, what I, I have thought, like, let me first start with something known as a, a local file, actually. Or else a local provider. So we missed it, actually. It will take some time. Let me complete this. So what is this local provider? Local provider is something like, for example, in your... Uh, system itself suppose this is my laptop this is my system where i have configured uh, you know like uh, aws credentials and everything here in my system itself or in my laptop itself i want to create some locally i want to create some file right you can use a command to create a folder or to, to create a, a file or to create a directory that is correct but through the terraform is there a way to create it yes there is a way to create it that we call it as a local provider now here if you go over here into the Google. Now what I will do that, I will go to the Google and I'll just say uh, terraform.io. So go to your registry and here you will see that go to your browse providers and you could see that you have various providers. Here, you, if you try to uh, search for local something, a local provider, can you see a HashiCorp local provider? Yeah, this is the provider I need actually. So this is the product I need, okay? You can go to the documentation. If you go to the documentation and if you go to, see the local provider is used to manage a local resource such as files. Sometimes this, this was also been asked in an interview, right? How to create any local file within your system by using Terraform? You have to say, I have to use a local provider. And if you expand it, what are the resources you have? You can create a simple basic local file Right. This is how you have to create. This is the example they are given it. As well as you can even you you can even create a some kind of a sensitive file actually by using a local sensitive file. Clear. So these are the only two resources. Though there, there are no other resources which are provided for this local provider. I think only these two are available. So we can play around with these two only. Like let me create a local file like this. This is what. Right. So what I will do? Okay. Let me do one thing. Let me first log into my console, my AWS console. So let me log into my AWS console. So let me log into my system. Sorry, my AWS account. 
So I'm in Northern Virginia. Let me shift to, to the Mumbai region. And let me check if I have any kind of a instances which are there. I think there's no instances which are running. So could see that there are no instances are running here. Right, guys? So it means that I need to, like, if you want, if I want, I can create it, okay? Now what I will do that, I will go to my download. So here you could see that you have a, a folder. So what I will do tomorrow, next class, guys, I'm trying to, I will try to uh, upload this entire folder into my GitHub account. So I will show you how to create, how to, uh, you know, like, uh, Upload all this file into my GitHub account and how to manage it. Everything we will see tomorrow in next session. So tomorrow, today, what we'll do, we'll do it everything locally only today. Okay. So we'll try to do it today locally. Now, what I will do that under the December 23, let me don't think, let me create a, some folder known as a local action. So I've created a local folder, right? Here, what happened? I'll open in a, firstly, I'll open my terminal. So I open the PowerShell terminal and then like I will do a right click over here and I will just go with show more options and then I'll open with the code. It means that I'm opening with the, with my Visual Studio code actually. Okay. So guys, you can do it here like this or else what you can do like you can go to your, uh, your uh, December 23 folder right? and you can open directly over here with the open with the code so that all will be available over there. So you can do this way also, right? So I've already created a folder over here and you could see that some other examples which we did in the last session, all these are available over here. So you can do this way also. It means that first you can create a folder, right? You get inside a folder, right? Here you can create a file actually like this, clear? Now, what I will do that, let me create a file. So what is the file? I'll give the name by name main.tf file. Okay, this is the file I've created. Now what I will do, guys, I have to create, I have to pro, I have to uh, specify what exactly the provider is. Now if you come over here into the documentation, you could see that if I go with my user provider, can you see here? It is saying as a Terraform, it started with the Terraform, and you could see that the required provider are not but the local. Yes, and you could see that the source is Hashacrop local and the version is 2.4.1. So here you are hard coding the version actually. It means that you have a version which is latest is 2.4.1 actually. Suppose in your code or suppose tomorrow you're working and there is a version of the 2.4.2 has come. So what happened, right? Whenever you are running this code, what it will do that? It will try to always, it will what it'll do is, guys, it'll try to always download the 2.4.1 only, even though 2.4.2 has come. Or else if you remove this line, or if you remove this complete version, whatever the latest is, that will try to download and it'll, it'll try to take it up. So now what I will do that, guys, I will try to take this whole code. So let me do one thing, let me try to... take this whole code. I need only this much, so provider local is not required. I'll copy this. Okay, I will come over here and just paste it. Actually. Clear? So now, after that, what happened, guys? He says that as per the documentation, he says that actually that you can create a local file. And how to create a local file? He's saying the resource and then say local file and then specify some label or the name, actually. So let me copy this whole code and come over here and paste it. Now, what he say that? He said the resource, the local file name. I'll give some name here. I don't give the name as something foo. I'll give something like a demo. File name. Okay, he is taking some path here. I'm I'm hard coding or I will give the complete file name here itself. Say something like a file name. What is a file name I can give? Something hello.txt file. Something. File. And the content is not this one. I want to just say uh, hello Terraform. This is a file content. It means that I'm creating a file locally here itself. It means that under my local folder, a file by name hello.txt will get created. 
and within this file, this is a string which will be appended within that. So you need to always mandatorily pass these two parameters. File name also you need to pass, even the content also you need to pass. So this is what called call it as a resource block is actually. Right? And this is a resource block and this is the resource name. And this is something like a label or a name of the resource we say. This is not the same as a file name. This is just a resource name. So this resource name can be used within your main.tf anyway. Suppose you want to reference or you want to refer to this resource, you can use this name. So here I've given the demo as a name. So I can give as a local underscore file dot demo to refer to this resource actually. So this name will always be locally within that model or within that file. You cannot make use of this name locally outside the file or outside the model. You cannot make use of it. Right? So this resource name and the name or the label together, we call it as an identifier. So we call it as an identifier for a given resource. So it must be unique within your file, within your main.tf file, this should be unique. You cannot have the same resource name with the same label or the name one more time. You cannot have like this. Suppose I'll copy this. I'm just saying you like this. I cannot have like this. Suppose you say, sir, if I have the same resource, suppose if I'm giving instead of demo, I'm giving demo one. Uh, now it differs actually. Now it differs. It means that now these two are two different resources. Suppose if you are having the same name, resource name, and the label or the name is same, then your Terraform will not accept it. Clear? So you can even see this also. Like for example, you are under the local. I'll just say DR. The code here is file you are having. Let me don't think. Let me try to do a Terraform in it. First, we need to initialize it. I could see that it's saying a duplicate resource local file. It is throwing an error. You cannot have it. So that's the reason you shouldn't have it the same resource with the same identifier. You cannot have it. So what I was saying that here, guys, here, uh, in this case, I'm just saying that here what happened guys so here what happened right the resource block dictates a resource of a given type so for example here in this case it is local underscore file with right so So this name, whatever you have. So here what happened, right? Here in this case, we are given a demo as a name actually, right? So the name demo is used to refer to this resource, right? Within the same uh, Terraform file or module dependency. Right, the resource type, the resource type means what? Here in this case, local underscore file. This is what, what I'm talking about. And the name, name or, or label you can say, name or label. In our case, it is demo. Together, uh, together yeah, serves as an identifier for a given resource and must be unique, UNIQE within that, within a model. So I'm using this term model, model a lot. We will see this later. So we'll have a separate topic on model, don't worry. So, but right now understand that whatever the main.tf you're writing, right? What are the file you're writing? main.tf, this will act like you a model itself, a single model, a model itself. <clears throat>
clear guys so let us see now whether we, it it creates a file so what i will do i'll go back to my uh terminal i'll just say draw form in it so you could see that actually it has downloaded the 2.4.0 version so because here you have given a 2.4. version and once you are created you know that these files have been this file as well as this folder by them dot terraform has been created and you know the significance of having these files right so you can even remove it also if you want you can remove it so if you remove this line if you are not using this version so what terraform will do automatically whatever the latest version is there so here in this case it is 2.4.1 only is the latest that itself will get downloaded right now what i'll do once the terraform init is initialized you can even run a terraform uh uh what i call fmt format and then say terraform plan right it says that it is only adding only one resource right and then like i'll just say terraform apply hyphen fn auto hyphen approve Now you could see that actually it has created it. As you know, the plus mark signifies that it has created and the apply has been successfully completed. If you go over here, can you see here a file by name hello.txt under this local folder only has got created because you are creating a hello.txt file. This file has a content hello terraform. Correct, guys? So now you will say that Rajesh. I don't think I want to just to change the string, right? What is it? Instead of hello Terraform, something, hello Rajesh, something. Yes. Now if I try to do a Terraform plan, what it will do, whether it's going to append a file or it is going to re replace the file. Replace means it will remove that file and it will recreate one more time. So that's the reason you could see that it is destroying that file again and again adding one more same, same file it is adding. So here in this case, guys, what it will do that it will not do any changes to the existing file. It will remove or it will remove that file and again recreate a file with the new content. So if you see over here, this is the new content. So if you try to do a Terraform apply, hyphen of an auto approve, you could see that it is destroying it as well as it is creating a new file. Right, you could see that it has been replaced with this hello Rajesh, and then like it has updated it. So one destroyed and one side one I've been added. Go over here and you could see that this is the content it has. Clear guys. So this is what the simple way how to use your local uh, providers for creating a file actually. So sometimes they might ask an interview, just you should be aware of that. There is something as a local providers are, are there. Hashacorp slash local. Clear? Now, okay. This is okay. This is good. Okay. Now, guys, what are the other things which we are going to see today? So, guys, we are going to see today, like, for example, uh, in your last session, in the previous session, we saw that we have created the uh, EC2 instance or EC2 resource n number of time, right? So for I create any resources here in this case, uh, I don't have any EC2 instance. So let us try to do a EC2 instance actually. Let us try to create it actually. So what I will do that, I'll go back here and I will try to create a separate folder by name. Uh, you know. Uh, Okay. okay, it is created under the local only. Okay, open the folder. Uh, uh, uh. I want to create an outside, but it is creating here. Okay, it is creating here inside here. So, no problem. I'll go and I'll try to create a folder here. Something like uh, what is it? I can create anything like something uh, AWS uh, underscore EIP, elastic IP. Right. Now, if you come over here and I could see that you have elastic IP. So what is elastic IP? 
elastic IP is something like, suppose for example, you want to assign an elastic IP to your EC2 instance, right? You can create or you can assign a elastic IP to it actually. So what it means that guys, say for example, I am I want to, uh, so let us take an example, right? So, so let me do the, let me try to create a provider.tf. So now you know that uh, for the provider section, I'll be creating a separate file, provider.tf, that is a good practice, right? So what I will do here, I'll go over here, I'll go to my, uh, my providers, I'll go to my AWS provider, and if you see the providers, you could see that this is what the provider I want to see it, right? So let me know thing, let me copy this whole line, this complete line. Come over here and paste it. Right, now here you could see that in the provider section, you need to provide the region information. So what is it? Actually, you'll just say region is equal to, so US hyphen, South hyphen one, right? Sorry. What is our region, guys? API iPhone South iPhone 1, not US. API iPhone South iPhone 1. This is the region you need to provide it actually. So this is will be under the provider section. Uh, so one question here. Hmm. Sir, in the line number three, we gave as required providers AWS. Whereas in the, the local folder, right? It was local. What is the difference between them? So that's what, guys, this is the additional new things which has come in your, uh, this one, what you call, uh, in your uh, Terraform 0 0.13 plus onwards. This is the mandatory stuff you need to provide it, actually. So here, what is happening that you are actually specifying that what is a specific version of your AWS product you need, actually. Earlier, what happened, right, you had only this section, that's all. You didn't have this section. Before 0 0.13, you never had this section at all. This we already discussed in the last last to last session. I think day six or day five, we have discussed this. So now here what happened, guys, you are providing a source here that from this specific source, say, for example, if you go over here, this is a specific source, HashiCorp slash AWS. This is the version I needed, actually. So what happened at every company, right, when they are developing a project using Terraform, right, they will tend to use some specific version. Okay, so here what happened that whatever the latest version is, that itself it is picking up actually. After that, once you've done it, you need to provide the, you, there is one more section within your Terraform zone as a providers. This is a mandatory stuff you need to provide it. Providers say AWS. So through this only, what happened, right? What happened, right? Like when you are trying to do a Terraform it, it will try to understand, okay, you are working on the AWS provider. It means that I need to download all the AWS plugin. I need to download it actually. But what is the version I need to download the AWS uh, plugin? This is the version I need to download. Other what happened guys, we didn't have this section. This was there. Whatever the latest was there only, that was only it was uh, downloading it actually. Clear? So coming back here, so here what happened, guys, you have provided the Terraform block as well as the provider block. You have provided under the provider.tf. Fine, good. Let me create one more file. So what I will do, I'll give the name as something like main.tf. You can give any name, demo.tf or anything like eip.tf because we are uh, we are trying to understand eip. You can give eip.tf also, but usually in the industry, you are seeing that always they give the main.tf as the file name. This is the file name that will be right now. Here, what happened, guys? What I will do that I will try to create one EC2 instance. So, to create an EC, EC2 instance, you know very well that I will go to my documentation. And within the documentation, if you come here, if you come down, can you do, see something as the EC2 here? EC2, yes, this is what I need actually. Elastic Cloud Compute. And here, if you go to the if you go to the AWS underscore. EC2 underscore or AWS underscore instance. See, this is what the code of the AWS instance resource name. So we need to always use this to create an EC2 instance. You know very well, right? So now what I will do that, I will just say resource 
as I said earlier, guys, always make a practice of always typing it completely. Okay, something like a uh, name, you give some name, server one, something. Okay, and then like open the bracket. And here you need to pass some value, something like AMI is equal to. So what is the AMI ID I'll give? I'll give the AMI ID of your Amazon Linux. So what is it, how you will get it? You have to just say launch instance and come over here and just click on the Amazon Linux or Ubuntu Linux, anything, Amazon Linux. This is the AMID I need to touch. So I'm taking the latest 2023 AMI. This is the AMID I need to touch. I'll copy it and come over here. So because this is a string always, string should be always with the double quotes. We have seen that actually. And then like what is the next parameter? The next parameter is about the instance type. Actually. Instance underscore type is equal to, let me give one thing, k2 dot micro. What else you need? I need a tag actually, good. So I'll just say tags is equal to, open the bracket. And what it says, name is equal to. So you have to always do the same thing. Put the capital N and rest all the source. Same, same thing you have to use, right? That's how it has been uh, defined over here in the documentation. And I'll give the same name. This is a label or the name which you are giving. It doesn't mean that it's going to create it with the same name. It is just for reference as a center. You can give any name here. Okay. So what is a tag name I'm giving? Something like uh, my server one, something. Right. So this is the resource which you are creating it actually. So AMID is nothing but your Amazon Linux and the instance type is micro. And this is the name and this is a label which should be assigned for that newly created server. So you could see that, and this bracket has to be closed here, and this bracket has to be closed here. This is a simple way of creating a resource, right? Now, shall we apply it and check it out, guys? Yes. Now, go over here and uh, come out from the local, and uh, you could see the CD to AWS underscore EIP, right? Here, you could see that you have this provider.tf and main.tf. Provider.tf, you already know that it has this provider. And in a main.tf, you have this resource file. Fine. Now, when I try to do a Terraform in it, see, you could see that it is downloading the latest 5.31.32.1 plugin. Because under the provider.tf, if you go through here, under the provider.tf, you have given the version actually. This is the version plugin it has downloaded. Now, when I try to do a Terraform uh, FMT, and then I'll just say Terraform plan, you know very well that uh, it'll try to create a EC2 instance, right? So it says that one resource will be created. What is the resource name? AWS underscore instance, that is server one, it will be created, right? And it is giving the name for uh, the label, it will be given as a my server hyphen one, because you could see the code, I have given the same, I have given the tag as my server one. Or you can give the same name, or you can give anything, right? I'm giving the name as my server one. So now what I will do with that, you know very well that, uh, sir, when we try to apply it, it will create it. Terraform apply, hyphen fn auto, if one approve. And as you know that even you have to do a Terraform validator also. Yes, we missed it out. Always you have to verify whether the configuration is valid or not, right? So everything is fine. So now I'll do a Terraform fly hyphen fn auto hyphen approve. So it obviously it is going to create an instance for us, right? The instance will and the type, the instance type is t2.micro it is using. And the, uh, which is the Linux it is using? It is using the Amazon Linux because we have provided the Amazon Linux EMI ID. So this we know very well. It is not that big deal actually, right? But the point here is that actually, guys, when you are creating a resource, yes, well and good, we are creating a resource. Yeah, you could see that it has completed in 32 seconds, right? Uh, you know, one of the question might be asked you, right? 
how do you check how much time a resource will take right is there any way to uh, calculate a time in the terraform while running terraform i need to calculate okay each and every resource how much it is created and finally give me the total time of how much total time it created to execute the whole uh, complete terraform file this is also one of the question which has been asked we will discuss about this in the upcoming session not now okay we can even display like what exactly time took for each and every resource to be created in seconds or even in minutes okay so now come over here and you could go to your console and you could see that actually guys it has created an in situ instance you could see that it has created with the name my server one and if you click on this and if you see that guys it has assigned a public ip address for you 13.23.45.164. This is well and good. Now what happened guys, when you try to stop this instance and start the instance, you could see that the public IP address will change. Right? So since, uh, because it is, uh, because under the free trial, if you're free trial, if you're, you're creating, and this is basically a public cloud, right? Be because whenever you try to restart the server or when you stop and start the server, Automatically, what the Amazon will do that it will try to assign a new public IP address for uh, for that particular instance. Whenever you reboot the system or whenever you stop and start, automatically it will try to give a new public. It means that this it will not try to fix any one IP address for a particular instance. No, it always be giving a different different IP address based on your whether you whenever you are starting the server or whenever rebooting the system or when you are stopping and starting. Right, every time. And every time this public IP address will change it actually. And you will say that Rajesh, I don't want to change this public IP because, because if you, you might have been hosted some application here and you would have added this public IP address in the load balancer. Now what happened right? as soon as you stop and start or as soon as the, any kind of upgrade happens to your system where it needs a reboot, force reboot. If you're rebooting again, the public IP address would be changed. Again, you have to go and update the public IP. A newly created or newly assigned public IP address, you have to go and create, uh, you have to go and update in your load balancer. It is just a tedious task actually. Hence what they suggest that actually go and try to attach a static IP address, static public IP address. If you come down here, affinity reserved, no, go to the networking, under networking, come over here. It is a public IP address. Private IP address. Private IP address will not change. Only the public IP address will change whenever you reboot the system or whenever you stop and start the instance. If you come down, uh, there is one section somewhere, guys. Where is it? Uh, static IP somewhere. It will be there. Uh, that will be blank actually. Where is it, guys? Under the details section itself, public IP address, public private IP address, elastic IP address. See, this is blank actually. There is no IP address. Now, what you can do that if you want to create a static IP address, you can come over here. Can you see elastic IP address IP? So just go to this and try to create a locket an IP. When you try to click on this, it will create an IP address for you. And then you can attach that IP to your EC2 instance. But right now, uh, because I try to when I try to create an uh, if I try to allocate an elastic IP address. An IP address will be assigned, a public IP address assigned, but that will be chargeable. So how much it is charged means it will be uh, like per hour, it will be 16 rupees. It will be detected from your account. It means that it will be billed for you. Whenever you are creating any public IP, elastic public IP, by default, what happened? It will be assigned for you and then like it will be charged per hour basis. What is the charge, guys? It will be 16 rupees per hour. It is almost like a, one cup of tea. If you go to the hotel and have a tea, right? You will be paying around 15 rupees, right? So it will be more or less same. So that IP address, whatever it has been allocated, right? That you can attach later to your EC2 instance. So usually in the companies, what they will do, right? They will always take an IP address and they will attach that IP address to the EC2 instance so that even though the instance is been stopped or it has been rebooted a number of times, that IP address will always be same. The public IP will not get changed because that, that public IP you have attached or you have added into your load balancer. That shouldn't get changed always. But that is obviously that will be chargeable. Even though you are under a free trial, it is not that it will be free for you. No, it will all it will be paid from the day one onwards. If you allocate any kind of a public IP. Now, what I'm going to do that I'll not do it manually. Rather, I'll do it through the Terraform. 
to the Terraform, I'm going to allocate it. How I'm going to do it? Now you could see that you have created a resource EC2 instance. Now I need to allocate or I want to create a elastic IP. How to do that, guys? Go to your documentation. Come over here. Can you see somewhere known as a AWS underscore EIP? Yes. Can you see it? AWS underscore EIP? Yes. This is what? AWS underscore EIP. Correct? AWS core EIP. There is an instance and there is something like a domain VPC, something like that. I think this is a new thing. Uh, earlier it was a name, something like a VPC is equal to true. It was there, but that is fine actually. Okay. Now what I will do that, I will just copy this whole thing, come over to the document, uh, sorry, code, and then paste it actually. Now what it says that actually that he's saying something like a resource name AWS AIP is a resource name, and here you are giving something like a uh, LB. I can give anything, my EIP, something, EIP. This is the name you are giving or the label you are giving. Instance is equal to, what is the instance? The instance is AWS instance of server-1 dot ID. That is what you have to give, actually. So what is it? You have to give, because you are doing interpolation, you want to, you, whatever the IP address which has been assigned, right? That has to be attached to this AWS instance. Right? So now what I will do that, I will try to use this AWS underscore instance dot of server hyphen one dot ID. So this we call the interpolation. And what is say that domain is a VPC. Let us see the documentation. Any other thing I need to provide? Apart from this, no, EIP1, EIP2, something, okay, domain VPC, okay. I don't think so, you need to provide any default VPC, uh, AWS underscore VPC underscore default. Uh, I don't think so, you need to provide any default VPC at this point of time. Let us see if it works or not. If it's not working, then we'll try to do the changes in the code. So guys, here what happened, at, I'm, I'm creating, this is the source, resource which is going to create an IP. Static IP address. What is static IP address? That's a public IP address going to create. And that same one will be attached to your AWS instance. Right? Here you could see, already in my case, guys, if you go to my AWS instance, already my server, my server is there actually. But here what happened at, you are all, all, you are also creating the same thing, my server one. That's already there. So it means that this resource will not get created. Only the elastic IP address will be created and that will be attached to this EC2 instance. Clear? Right? So now what I will do that, I will go over here. Right? And what I will do that, so already you are, you already you did a Terraform in it. So let me do a Terraform FMT. And okay. Then I'll just say Terraform validate. So the configuration also success. There is no issue, right? Now when I try to do a Terraform plan, let's check how Terraform plan works. So it says that actually only one resource will be added. Why? Because that this is the elastic IP address will be added to you. Okay, nothing to be destroyed here because already EC2 instance is running. It will not recreate it again. Only one resource will be added, right? So AWS underscore refreshing, see, it refreshing, and it says that already it has found an ID for it. It means that already the server is up and running. Only you need to create an EC, uh, sorry, e elastic IP address for that. So when I try to do an apply, guys, Terraform apply, uh, Terraform apply, hyphen hyphen auto approve, enter, they could see that it is going to assign a IP address for it. See, it is creating an elastic IP. Now, if you go over here, guys, and if you come over here, and you could see that actually, go to the elastic IP, open a new tab, check it. Can you see? This is the public IP address which has been allocated. See? It's a public IP. And the same public IP, 3.7.81.24, is attached to the EC2 instance. How you check it? Go over here, click on this, and come over here. Can you see here, elastic IP address, this is attached already. Now, even though you reboot your system and all, this will never get changed. And this is what the IP address you can add into your load balancer. Clear, guys? So now, as soon as I created, 
uh, as I said earlier, right, an elastic iPad is assigned, 16 rupees will always be, it is now, it is started billing for me. So this will be applicable for only one hour. After the second hour, if I'm not destroying it, second hour, another 16 rupees will be added. So totally I'll be getting 32 rupees actually. Again, so if I leave like that, guys, the billing will be keep going on. So it is per hour basis, right? So assume that the whole one, one day you leave without destroying it. How much bill you're going to get, right? You're going to get a very big bill. Suppose the whole month you left without de uh, deleting this elastic iPad, right? You'll get a very big bill. So always make sure that actually whenever you try to create the resources and play around with that, please even try to destroy it also. Please delete, destroy it also. Clear, guys? So now what I will do that, I will go over here. Okay, Rajesh, I don't want it. I will just better to do a destroy. I'll just do a Terraform. Destroy. Enter. So you are... So what and all it is destroying? It is destroying the AWS instance as well as the Elastic IP also. See, both. AWS instance is also destroyed and even your Elastic IP address also is getting destroyed. Everything you want to destroy it. I'll just say yes. And I could see that it is getting destroyed. Okay, guys, so you could see that if you come over here and if you try to refresh this, you could see that it has been removed. You go to the instances, now you could see that this server, my server one, has been terminated. Correct? It has been terminated. Okay, so nothing is over, nothing running is, nothing is running over here, right? Now, what are the other things we need to understand now, right? So after this, guys, there are many other things are there, uh, many good resources, many other things are there which you can play around to create a resources. Say, for example, I have an EMI. So EMI is nothing but Amazon machine image. So you can call this as something like an OS image or compressed OS image. This OS image, it could have an application within it or it couldn't, or it, it is, or it is not. So it is left to you. The way the, this, uh, like these images are built, right? You can build along with the application or just build a plain OS image. That is what, whenever you try to do it, you will create it actually. And these are all like, uh, it's already been, uh, created this AMI and it has been given to you guys actually, right? Now, what I will do with here that actually that, now you will say that Rajesh, I want to create an EMI image. Now, right now I just destroyed it. What I'll do guys, let me don't think, let me uh, start with one server actually. Okay, I will just, I'll just click on this and I'll just start, I'll just start this instance. Instance state is equal to running. So let us wait until this server comes out. You can create one more server like that, but okay, fine. So I already have a server by the VM1. So I'm making it up. So this is a server which is up and running. And uh, this server, uh, when I created it, I used the Amazon Linux itself as an EMI ID to create it. To create it, I used a Amazon EMI ID itself actually. Now, so guys, now whenever uh, you have this instance, right? You have this instance up and, up and running. This instance, right? The root volume is nothing but the disk actually, right? You, If you go through your volume section, if you go through your volume section, where is it? Here, volume section. And if you do a right click, so you could see that actually there are three volumes are there actually because here in my case, guys, there are three servers are there, VM1, VM2, and VM3. 
other two servers are stopped, but this is what it is running. And this is the instance ID for each and every server, right? While creating it, because I use the t2.micro, 8 GB of EBS volume or not, but the hard disk or the root volume will be assigned for each and every instance. So now what I will do that, if I go to this volume section, right here from here, you could see that I went through a right click and I opened it. Under the volume section, it is showing that there are three volumes are there. But how do you identify for which, which you, for this VM1, which is the volume? You can go and you can just copy this uh, instance ID. I think copy the instance ID. Come over here and just search for this. Paste it like this. Now you could see that this is the instance ID. So you can just rename this. This is for the uh, virtual machine one volume, VM1, virtual machine VM1. So it means that this is the volume which has been assigned for your VM1 instance. For the VM1, this is the volume actually. Or else you can just rename it as a, a VM1 volume. We have one wall, something like this. So this is the volume. Now, guys, now you'll say that, Rajesh, this is the volume. What I do need to do, right? Can I create a snapshot of this volume? Okay, you can create a snapshot also. So can I create a snapshot of the volume? With that snapshot, I can create an EMI image. Yes. So what you'll do that? There are two ways are there actually. There are two ways of creating EMI images. Okay. One is nothing but the current running server volume you can create a snapshot and with uh, that snapshot, you can create a AMI image. This is the first way or the second way is that actually you can create an AMI image from a running instance itself. Let me that directly, Rajesh, this is the EC2 instance which is running. Can I create an EMI image directly from this here? You can create it. You can just click on this and go to the actions, right? And you can just say that you can create a AMI image. Where is it, guys? Uh, Images create an image like this. We can directly create an image with a running instance only. Or else, as I said earlier, I can go to that volume. They go to the volume, create a snapshot of that volume, and then with that snapshot, create an EMI image. Anything is fine. Is it fine? So shall we see how to create it manually and then try to do it through the Terraform? Yeah. Now, what I will do that, I'll do one thing. I'll just click on this. And uh, because I'm working on to the VM1, because right now I'm concentrating on the VM1, right? Because VM1 is up and running. So I'm just creating a snapshot of the VM1 volume itself. Because you could see that 8 GB of uh, like hard disk is given and the type is GP3, 3000 IOPS, right? And this is the snapshot ID. And this is what the creation time, it giving you some more extra details like this. Right? Okay. So now what I will do guys, I'll click on this here and I'll try to create a snapshot. Before creating a snapshot, you could see that under after, under the Elastic block storage, you have something like a snapshot also. Let me open the snapshot and check whether any snapshot is available. Okay, this snapshot is available. Who created a snapshot? Sometime it got created, uh, not sure. I can remove the snapshot. Let me go ahead and try to do a delete this snapshot. 
I don't want it. I deleted this snapshot. Currently in user. Okay. Fine. No problem. Let it be actually. Now what I will do that I will go to the volume under the view wall. Let me just click on this and just go to the actions and create a snapshot. And you can give a snapshot name. Right. So what is the snapshot name you'll give? Something like uh, snap of like uh, VM1 or VM1, virtual machine one, right? And what else you have to give? Any other name? Uh, I can give the name as uh, name and the value, same thing. Snap hyphen VM1. Okay, this is the tag I'm giving. I'm just trying to. Yeah, it's a running only, yes. Correct. So now what I will do that, I will try to create a snapshot. Clear yes, I'm just creating a snapshot of the volume itself. So it is successfully created. If you go to the snapshot here, Hold a second, guys. So, where I was, guys, actually. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wait, hold a second. <laughs> so, where I am under now? I am under the uh, wall. Hold a second. I am under the wall. Okay. Uh, this one, VM wall one. Okay. It's in use. Okay, I think I did some mistake actually. Hold a second, guys. I can do it again. Okay, go and try to delete the snapshot. Now, what I should do, guys, basically, I have to come over under the volume. Under the volume, what I'm doing here, I'm going to my volume one, view wall one, and just do a create a snapshot. So I'm giving something like a snapshot, anything. I can give any name, snapshot, snap of VM1, right? And I'm giving a tag, name of, okay, snap, same thing I'm giving, snap of VM1. And then go ahead and create a snapshot. Now, once you run it, actually, what you can do that, you can go over in the snapshot, under snapshot, open this in a new tab, Right, and now if you go it, can you see here? It has created. It is still pending because it is creating because it has to take a whole snapshot of the eight GB. This will take time, guys. It might take around, yeah, it might take around less than a minute. It has completed with this snapshot. With this snapshot, actually, you can create an AMI ID. So create an image from the snapshot. Create an image from the snapshot. Now, create an image means you are creating an EMI ID. So, if you go to the EMI ID, let me try to do a right click, open the EMI ID. Do you have any EMI ID? No. So, let me do a thing. Let me click on this. Let me do an action and let me create an image from that snapshot. So, what is the snapshot name you have to give, guys? Anything. Like, for example, uh, something. My new uh, VM1 snap actually, something. Virtual machine snapshot. I'll give the same name. Architecture is x 64 uh, You can even verify. Here what happened, guys? When you try to go to your instance, actually, this is nothing but your virtual machine one. And if you try to come over here and you try to understand the disk, actually, the disk type, whatever it is assigned, where you'll get to know, you'll get to know in when it comes to storage, right? Go to the storage. You could see that it's an EBS volume. It is XVDA. Fine. XVDA. Now, what is happening is that here, when you're trying to create a snapshot, it is saying that it is giving the name as slash dev sda1. No problem. Let it give us actually. 
and what are other things? Do I have to give any other name? So it is creating with the, with the slash dash da1. This is snap ID and this is what it is using. 8 GB and GP3 is our volume type. It is by default, it is taking this value, root device name. You need not to change anything over here actually. Right? And then try to do a create an image. Right? So now you could come over, see if you go, if you are, if you go to your uh, AMI, AMI, and you could see that it is creating an instance. It is creating. I think it's already created. See, it is available. So it has created an AMI ID with, with the name AMI with this name, and this is the AMI ID. And this is what the source is giving, and it is the ownership available, all those things. It is provided here. Now you can launch an instance. You can click on this, and you can launch the EC2 instance, actually. Clear this. So now what up what I'm trying to tell that actually this AMID is available now. Right? Now if you you can even launch an instance from the AMID. Or else you can go to the instance types, instances, right? There you can go to the launch instance. Right? You can give a name. And here under your my AMI, you can go here and you can select this whatever the AMI you, which is available. My new VM1 snap AMI is there and you can launch an instance with that. Now the thing is that here guys, actually, when you have this AMI ID, right? There are many things you can do it actually. This is the new AMI you have created now. If you click on this, if you go to the action, can you see here, you are having something known as a, a register AMI permission and copy AMI. If so, it means that actually, suppose you are under the Mumbai region, you have created this AMID. Now you will say that Rajesh, I want to, I want to copy this into the Northern Virginia. How to copy it? Just click on this, go to the action, just say copy AMI. You could see that you can give a description that, okay, this is the name, you, this is the AMID you are copying it. Okay, you want to give it in a description, you can give it. You could see the destination where you want to copy it. So you can copy you know, to the Northern Virginia. Like this, you can give it and you can try to copy it. Just say copy AMI, it start copying it. It means that from one region to other region also, you can copy an AMI, whatever you have created an AMI, right? That you can copy it. Or what you can do here, this is the AMI. Click on this and you can go to the edit permission, edit AMI permission, click on this. Now you could see that actually, right, guys, you are pay you are sharing it as a private lay, right? And also you can share the EMI to some other user account. Say for example, this is what uh, Rajesh user account is. And if you click on here, you could see that this is the account ID for the Rajesh. Similarly, let's assume that actually there is some other user by name Harinder is there. Harinder is having his own account ID. If Harinder wants my EMI ID, right? I can come over here and I can give the add, add account ID. So it means that I want to copy this snapshot or uh, AMID to this particular account ID. So if I do an account, account ID, I need to provide that account ID like this. And I can start sharing it actually. It means that you can even share between the user accounts. From one user account to the other user account. How you will do that? You have to go here under the, your AMI, AMIs. Click on this. Go to the actions. Edit AMI permissions. And then like add the account ID here. You have to add it and you have to just say, save to this. It will start copying that. What are the AMI is there? It will going to copy from your account to that. What are the account number you have given? This, all these things, guys, whatever we did, we can do all these things through the Terraform action. That is the beauty of Terraform is that whatever you do it manually in your AWS account, right? Same thing can do everything in an automated fashion using an AMI. Sorry, using a Terraform because Terraform provides all kind of a uh, like resources for you to be created, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how to do that actually? Now, okay, fine. Okay, I think let me remove this. So you're creating a volume and all guys, it will be a chargeable because you are creating a separate volume name, volume right, a new snapshot. For the snapshot, you created a volume, right? Right, you assign a volume 8 GB that will be charged per hour. Will be charged per hour. 
Yes. Okay. Now what I will do that I am trying to do a I want to create a AWS EMI. To do that actually you can go to your uh, documentation. Can you see something like AWS underscore EMI? Yes. Right click on this. Can you see something like here for example guys AWS underscore EMI or else come down. We can create it actually. So they have changed many of the things actually, right? Uh, earlier it was their virtual agent type and all. Now they have been changed to most recent and all like self-executor. Any other example is there? No. AWS underscore AMI. Yeah. Owner root device also it is taking by its own filter EMID EBS virtual agent it is taking so you have to take this complete one you have to take this complete along with the filters also you have to take it along with that yeah but here while giving it HPM is there okay you here you have to give the filter name my EMI you have to give it actually. So you have to give a my AMI ID or, or else. Mm -hmm. uh, my AMI, here I have to give it actually. Hold a second, guys. AWS underscore EMI underscore from instance. Yeah, this is what you have to give guys. This is what you have to give actually. This is a separate new uh, research which they have created. Now the AWS underscore EMI from instance. From instance. Is there? So this is what you need to use it actually. Name resource. No, this is from instance actually. Uh, owner, self, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Example. Where is EBS volume? EBS is there, root device. Which one is there? Uh, where to mention the snapshot ID? This has been changed, guys, actually. This has been changed over the time. We'll be keep changing it. Okay, so let's see. Or else, uh, like, uh, I want to even copy it, actually. Say, for example, I want to copy it. I can use the EMI copy also, AWS EMI copy. So, so AWS copy ID. So, it means that you are having a source EMI, okay, and the destination where you want to copy. Right, all the details have been provided here. Assume that actually, guys, here in this case, I have my AMI ID. This is my AMI ID that is there. It is there in the Mumbai region. Now I want to copy it to the Northern Virginia. I want to copy it to the Northern Virginia. How to copy it? You have to use AWS underscore AMI underscore copy. So to do that, what I will do that, I will go to here. Let me do one thing. Let me create a, um, a separate folder. Here something as a, uh, what is it? I'll just say uh, AWS underscore EMI, something. EMI underscore copy. Okay. Come over here and then like you can create a file. So let me copy the 
provider section as it is. I have the code. I don't want to again again do it. So I'll go over here and I'll just say provider .tf file. So this code I have it. Now I will create one more file by name main.tf. So under the main.tf guys, what I will do that I am going to create an instance actually. So already you have a code. I need not to write it again again. You have this code actually. So I have this AWS instance, right? The same code I'm using here also. Okay. Now what I will do that I'm trying to, I want to copy it actually. So to copy it, go to the documentation. Just try to just copy this whole code, come over here and then paste it. Okay. So now what he say that actually that you want to copy the AMI from your, uh, from your APF and South one to your Northern region, USF and East one, you want to copy the AMI, right? So what you will do that you will come over here and then go to your main.tf and here you have AWS underscore M underscore copy. You have it, guys. So what you have to do that you have to just do the changes to this code actually. So what is the name you are giving? Some direct Terraform example. You can give, you can keep it as it is if you want or else you can do it. You can change it, right? AWS underscore M copy, right? What is it actually? Something like uh, I can give anything like I can give something else. let it be example only let it be the same name now here what happened the name is uh, Terraform examples copy of uh, AMID okay let it be description source of AMID what is the source guys source is what if you come over here and if you go to the AMI this is your source actually this is your source so copy this AMID which you created right now go over here and then paste it actually. Okay. This is the AMID. And what is the name you need to provide? Here you could see that uh, if you go to your, this one, you gave the AMID. Did you give any name actually? I didn't give any name. I can give something like a, uh, anything. I can give something like a tag something. Okay, uh, AMI from Mumbai, actually, something like that. You are giving a tag, actually, right? So what you are doing that here from if you so go to provider dot provider dot tf, your AMI is there in APF and South hyphen one a because under here in this region. But where you are copying it, you are copying it to the US hyphen West hyphen one, and this is the AMID which you want to copy from your source to the destination. Clear is? So I'm just copying it. So this code is available now. So let us go back here to the terminal. Is anything is required guys? Nothing? Okay. So now what I'll do that, I'll come out from here and I'll just say AWS underscore EMI underscore copy. I'll just say Terraform init. Okay, it is in the slides. Terraform validate. Just to see things are okay. Okay, I'll just say Terraform FMT. Terraform PAM. So two resources should be added. So one is nothing but your AWS instance, okay? And other is nothing but your, it is going to copy it actually. So from where it is copying guys, it is trying to copy to the, the source AMI is US hyphen East hyphen one, right? And uh, it is giving it actually, right? So, but here, uh, one second, but your source AMI is not US hyphen East hyphen one, right? Where is it actually? It is under APFN South FN1, right? 
So source MI is not here. You, it, this is there in our AP hyphen South hyphen one. So you have to give as a AP hyphen South hyphen one. Correct. Right? This is what because under uh, under your Mumbai region it is there actually. But where you need to copy it actually? You need to copy it to your where you need to copy guys? You need to copy it to your Northern Virginia, which is nothing but your US hyphen East hyphen one actually. Here under the product section. You give something like a US hyphen East hyphen one. Here you need to copy it actually. This is what the destination of it. Correct? Eh? Am I correct, guys? Correct? Now I will just try to do a Terraform valid one more time. Just to make sure that. The syntax is everything fine. Again, I'll do a Terraform plan. So you could see that actually, it is trying to create two resources and the one resource is nothing but your AWS underscore AMI copy. So the source is nothing but it is APFN South iPhone one. Where's the destination? Is there anywhere it is destination is provided? No. Right? Now let me do and apply for it. Terraform, apply, hyphen, hyphen, auto, hyphen, approve. So this will take time because that you are copying an EMI itself, right? This will take time, but this has already started it actually. But if you want to make sure that what you can do that you can go to your uh, Northern Virginia region. You can go and you can do a right click and you can open it in a new tab. So this is your Northern Virginia region. So under Northern Virginia region, if you go to the AMI, can you see here the copying has been taken place? See, it is pending, right? The copying is going on. Correct? The copying is going on. So since it has been executing, since it is running, right, this will take some time, guys. One or two, mostly two to three minutes, it will take you to copy this whole AMI. So from where it is copying, guys, it is copying from your Mumbai region to the Northern Virginia. Under the AMI section, you could see that this AMI has been copying it. Clear? Let's wait, see how much it will take time. I think it will take some time. Two, three minutes it will take to complete this. Okay. So still under pending. After that, it will see that the status will be something like available. So like that, guys, like uh, uh, like in an interview, like they will definitely ask you to create a resource and all, right? Definitely they'll ask you all these things. Have you created a volume group? Have you created a, like a EMI? Have, uh, have you copied the snapshot from one region to the region? Or else like have you created an RDS, right? Uh, database. Have you created any uh, implementing a Lambda function within your Terraform, using Terraform, right? Uh, or else have you created any kind of a Fargate service using... So like that, whatever you know about the AWS Cloud Service, right? Definitely what happened, right? You will be... Uh, you need to practice on how to create the same resource using Terraform. 
because at interview they might ask you anything to be you know anything they can ask you and they can they will be asking you to write the code itself actually so it is always better that you write your code by your own without uh, referring to some documentation so that will showcase that you are very perfect in understanding or you have did so many times that you remember the whole code or you remember what kind of arguments you pass right while defining a resource right you know very well that confidence they will get on, on you actually so that is what we needed when you attend the interview right please don't say that don't ask the interview that can i refer to the documentation and do it that is okay he will not say no right but it is not good actually so you practice so much that all those uh, argument what you uh, what you pass through a resource right that you remember it and uh, like uh, at during the interview time right if you are able to write it very clearly very specifically that will be kind of a like a good impression on you actually. good impression on you so better to practice two three times so that you remember things what are the arguments you have to pass to the particular resource actually right so the most common which i have seen in interview which they ask you the vpc they ask they ask you to design the whole uh, three tier architecture like uh, your web server apps are on under the db server and uh, they will ask you to create a uh, security groups they'll try to create ask you to create a vpc they'll also try to create uh, ask you to create a private subnet on the public subnet right and then like what happened right uh, they will try to you to uh, say that like create a load balancer we will also see in our upcoming sessions how to create a load balancer in uh, using terraform and how to add uh, all those ip addresses or the vms or the instances within our within your uh, load balancer that also we will see it and these are all pretty simple it is not that uh, you know great deal to understand it is very simple the code is already there you have to just uh, go and try to understand the code and and just uh, do some modification and it will start with you. but as i said earlier like you shouldn't uh, be seeing the documentation when you are giving interview no without documentation you should remember everything and you should be able to write the code in front of us so i think it is done guys okay still pending i think the code is still running see it took almost 5 minutes to complete it i think it will take time guys okay guys so it has been copied now but it is throwing an error like this creating an ec2 instance invalid am i not found okay so what i understand actually we are trying to uh, as part of this code uh, execution yes. right uh, we are trying see, yeah we are trying to even create this am ac2 aws instance also we are creating it get so where we are creating we are creating under the your northern virginia but this am id doesn't exist right hence it has failed i think i could have removed this resource actually yes yes you supposed to add, uh, add this yeah. resource yes 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 that's all yes right so that's how it is throwing in error otherwise uh, uh, it has copied actually this has copied okay so now i want to destroy it you know very well that how to destroy it i'll just get error from destroy fn fn auto fn auto D E so only one resource will be destroyed because like E C two was not created. Yeah, I think it is destroyed. Go here to the Northern Virginia. You are in Northern. Just do a refresh. See, it has been removed actually. Right. Come over here. Is this is removed? No, it is not removed. But yeah, it is not removed. That's fine. Okay, clear, guys. Now here, if you go through your AWS uh, underscore EMI, this is the code which I was saying actually. So here, what happened, right? It is uh, it is it will create an EMI by creating a snapshot of it actually. By creating a snapshot actually so you can even create like this way also you can try out with this actually right here what i have to give that if you come over here and if you go to your snapshot you need to pass this okay i have re i've removed it when you created the snapshot right the snapshot sna the same snapshot no, ID. Uh, you need to copy not, not 
uh yeah correct yeah this map sorry you can give it actually yeah i'm not the original sorry yes this snapshot ready you can give it actually so with this snapshot ready it is going to create an emi actually can even try that also like here uh go here i'll remove this resource i don't want it and come over here and go to this copy this whole code actually So let it, let it be as it is actually, all these things. I don't want to change it actually, right? And you can give a snapshot idea of this. This is a snapshot idea. Right, with what name it's going to create? Something like... My new EMI. Okay, that's all. Error form. What is it? Okay, before that, let me go and do the changes in providers. AOS hyphen AP hyphen South hyphen one. Yeah, this is the change you have to do. Go back to the providers. Yeah, anything device name. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's all. All right, now I'll go here. I'll just say validate. And then say perform. I will not do a plan. I'll just try to do an apply. So it's going to create an EMI, right? So if you come over here, and if you go to the EMI, can you see here? My new EMI Mumbai, it has created it actually, with this new EMI, like that. Here is. So I hope that today you understood what is your task actually, right? What is your task is that actually, if you go to the documentation, here you have something as a AW underscore e base underscore volume. If you come down, where is it? Or else here you have e base, right? Go to this section, not this, here. EBS. Under EBS, can you see here? you have to go and create an EBS volume. What is an EBS volume means? Say for example, here you already have, have, a, have volumes actually. You want to create a new volume. So how to create it? I'll just go, go and create a volume, create volume, click on create volume. So here you can select the volume type, GP3 or GP2 or GP1. So I'll select as GP3. I will give the volume of something like a 10 GB, okay, or whatever, or you have something. So tag, I can give something like a name is equal to my uh, new volume, new volume, something. And then you can create it. It means that you are creating a volume or the volume of a size 10 GB. Can you see here? my wall one? Now you could see that actually it is creating state actually. Now it is being available. It is available. Now guys, you can go and even attach this volume also. So you can click on this, my new wall, which you have created, which is of 10 GB action. Okay, modify the one, attach the volume. You can go and attach to which volume, to which instance you want to attach. I want to attach to the VM1 instance. Go and attach it like this. See, it means that now it is in use actually. So if you go to the instance of the list of VM1, 
okay you go to your storage it will show you that this is the two volumes this is the native volume slash to xvd what has been given now this is the attached one which, which is a new one which has been attached so now what i did here i tried to went to the volume and i created it actually right so you can go here and you can go to the actions and you can uh, detach it actually force detach volume okay then just click detach and detach it once you detach it okay now you can go on you can just go on you can just uh, delete the volume why it is not getting deleted delete the volume here go and delete the volume so now how you are able to do all these things guys how you are able to do because in your console it provides all it will provide you all this so that you will be able to do it the same thing i want to do through the terraform actually so under your under your EBS, right? There is something as AWS underscore EB, EBS underscore volume. Click on it. And you can see that actually, what you need to provide under your AWS EBS volume, you need to provide the availability zone under which availability zone you are creating and what is the size you are creating. So whenever you want to play around with that, don't give a bigger size, give as a 4 GB or 5 GB or 10 GB. Like say. Don't give some bigger 100 GB and all. It'll, uh, like it'll be charged actually. And this is a tag you need to provide. Once you're doing that, after the volume is created, can you create a snapshot of that volume? Yes, you can create a snapshot of that, of that volume. So by using AWS underscore EBS volume snapshot. So this is the snapshot you have to call it to create a snapshot of that volume. So this is a small exercise you have to do. Again, the same thing. This volume, can you import it? Can you copy from one region to other region? Can you import from the other region to my region? Right? And what are the permission? How to attach the volume? Like how I attach to the VM2, right? Uh, VM1. So you can go and you can attach it also. So here you are giving AWS volume how to attach it actually. So you need to provide the instance ID or to pass it over here. And right? Third case. And this is what the instance, AWS instance there. And ABS volume you have created it. The same thing you have to go and attach it by using AWS volume attach. So, guys, can you do this as an exercise for tomorrow? So, you have to create an ABS volume, take create a snapshot, copy the snapshot from one region or other region, and finally attach it. This you can write a single uh, uh, Terraform file to achieve all the things. Okay, Anita. So guys, so then what we'll do that we'll wind up today. I thought I will start the variables, but uh, uh, we will not be able to start the variables. Tomorrow in the next sessions, we are going to start the variable. Very important. Uh, what are variables, right? What are the different types of variables you have? Uh, those things and all. So what we are going to start from next topic is that actually to, in the next session, we will start with uh, how to create an IAM user and attach a IAM user to the instance. Simple, it is also simple, very simple. After that, we will start with the variables. What are variables and what are the different types of variables? Okay. This itself will take around two hours of session or more than two hours also sometimes, right? So the next section will be only concentrating on the variables, guys. Okay, maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow I'll take class. I will confirm you. Maybe tomorrow itself I will take a class. Okay, and uh, I will uh, try to take around two hours of class so that we will be able to at least uh, uh, try to complete the variables part tomorrow. Clear? So, okay, guys, I think uh, it's comp uh, we are done with today. Uh, do you have any doubts? If no, then we will want to wind up today's session. Is it fine with everyone? Harinder yes. Mahesh, Ram? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sure, guys. Chalo mm -hmm. then. then we'll meet up tomorrow again. Okay, I will confirm you. If not tomorrow, then day after tomorrow, definitely I will take the class. Morning time. Is it fine, Samir, Venkat, everyone? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. Chalo then. Tomorrow we'll meet again. Let me stop the recording.